are going to have some fun this next four weeks. All right, so many of you are noticed that I'm dressed a little bit different. No, I'm not going back to college. Um, and no, I'm not playing tennis, although I look like it. And anyway, but anyway, we are going to go back to the 80s, okay? And I know there are many of you who grew up in the 80s, um, as myself, and the 80s was a great decade, but we're not just going to focus on the good old days of the 80s. We're going to focus on chapters of the 80s in Psalm, because I think it's something that's going to help us get focused on where we need to be and where we need to go. But in order to reminisce and to have fun about the 80s, that's what we're going to do. I, I can't help but think that this series follows our Own the Vision series, because if you remember back in that series, I've talked and talked about how what the church was like back when it first was established and when they're on Front Street and where they are, where we are now and how we can look back. And it's good to look back. It's good to reminisce about things in the past. But I truly do not believe that God wants us to stay in the past. And we can honor the past and we can look back at the past. But I truly think he wants us to look forward. But we are going to have some fun looking back at the past. Um, looking back at the 80s, there's a lot of young people here who don't realize the impact of what the 80s did to be where we are today. We're going to look at some of those this morning. Some of the top movies, because I think in the 80s is when movies really started to kick in and people really uh, were moviegoers. If you remember, there's one in particular movie that everyone liked, and that was The Karate Kid. You all remember The Karate Kid? I know there's heads going. So what do you remember most about The Karate Kid on the count of three? One, two, three. Wax, there you go. Wax on and wax off. And maybe you did that before and you, you know, remember that. Or what about the crane kick? You remember that? When at the end of the, I'm not going to do it because I'll fall on my face. <laughs> but that was something that we remember. All right, so we remember uh, the karate kid. Oh, and we can't forget, and even though it's been reproduced, it's not the same, Ghostbusters. How many of you remember Ghostbusters? I enjoyed that movie so much. Uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, I mean, I'm starting to look like him, but the, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and we know from the movie Ghostbusters, you cannot cross what your proton pack, the, the streams of proton, because that is just not going to happen. So we have Ghostbusters, um, uh, Indiana Jones, Gremlins. Y'all remember Gremlins? Yeah, I can't make the noise of them, but I'll try. Um, and I forgot, I was reminded, Drew reminded me, and we might talk about it again next week, maybe even have some special props, Star Wars. I mean, you can't forget Star Wars, that came out, wonderful, wonderful, great, great effects, I mean, just blows you away. And then, I can't speak any longer without saying this movie, Footloose. How many of you remember Footloose? You remember that? Yes. Don't laugh, Katie, it was a good movie. It was a good movie, man. Footloose. And the song Footloose, you got to get up and dance uh, with that. Uh, TV shows debuted, Punky Brewster. Y'all remember Punky Brewster? Karen saying no. Uh, but there was a show called Punky Brewster. Uh, I didn't watch it in particular, but it was there. Uh, Night Court, you remember Night Court? Oh, okay, Drew, you, you're going to shake your head through all of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? Um, uh, Mork and Mindy, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nanu Nanu. I mean, how can you forget Mork and Mindy? I could have done that one. Now, who's the boss? Um, Murder, She Wrote. And all these young people are going, I have no clue. Go to Netflix. Go to Hulu. You can find them there. And how can we forget? Because everyone in high school, at least when I was in high school, had to look like the following TV show hit it. Yeah. Miami Vice. Wasn't that awesome? I tried to find my clothes for that. I just could not find them this morning, but I can pose like him. You know. Anyway, <laughs> Charles in Charge? Come on, you got to know Charles in Charge, Karen. Do you know Charles in Charge? Well, let me sing the song for you. Charles in Charge. Okay, I'm not going to finish it, but we all remember Charles in Charge. Then the thing that really got us to where we are today is technology. Technology just busted out during the 80s. You had your first Apple Macintosh computer. How many of you remember that? You remember the Macintosh computer? Wasn't that an awesome creation? I mean, just so awesome. And now we've got Apple in our pocket. 
Think about that for a moment. If it wasn't for the 80s, we wouldn't be on our phones right now. I mean, think about that right now. Just wonderful technology. And I remember the first computer that came out that had a mouse. Someone said, you have a computer with a mouse? I was like, what's a mouse? But it really looks like a mouse, doesn't it? I mean, if you really look at it, and I just thought it was phenomenal because I was doing programs with floppy disk. You remember the big floppy disk that you had to get back to the basics? To get back to the basics of, of who God is, of what God wants in our life. And my prayer, my prayer for you this morning is this, is that you would see God in all of his glory, that you would start to see God a little bit more clearer in your lives, that you will begin to know him a little bit more fully. And so today we're going to focus in on Psalm 80. So if you have your Bibles or your phone, go to Psalm 80. When we look at Psalm 80, we see that this was written during a time of God's people. During a time of God's people, the Israelites. And they were under attack. They were under attack. We're not exa exactly sure who was attacking them. It could have been the Babylonians, maybe it was the Syrians, but we're not sure. Scholars kind of disagree on who was attacking them at this time. But the fact of the matter is, when you read Psalm 80, there is no doubt that it was a dark time for the Israelites. And as I read that chapter, I couldn't help but put into focus where we are now, maybe in our lives, where we are now as a country, that we are in a very dark time. We are in a very dark time. And the thing that I love about this this chapter is, is the encouraging words of how we can be restored, how we can be made new again, even if we have fallen. You see, in Psalm 80, you notice three verses, verse 3, verse 7, and verse 19. And when you look at these three verses, they repeat the same thing word for word. And I remember in my Bible classes, they would tell us, if there is something in the Bible that repeats over and over again, guess what, friends? God wants you to know that. He wants you to understand that. He wants you to grasp hold of that. And here's the thing that I love about this. I didn't even realize that my dad was a biblical scholar because he would repeat things over and over to me all the time. Okay? But it is important when things are repeated over and over again. He's really trying to get our attention in this aspect. So we're going to listen and we're going to look at how what he wants to say to us today. So look at verse 3 and you can look at verse 7 or 19. It doesn't matter because it's the same thing. But this is what he says. Restore us, O God. Or the way I like to think about it, make us new again. Bring us back. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. Three different times this prayer is written verbatim in Psalm 80. So we're going to spend our entire time today unpacking this very short verse. It's short, it's simple, but it is powerful because it reveals to us who God is and what he wants for our lives today. It shows us that God restores us. It shows us that God makes us new again. You see, friends, that is who he is. He is God. He is restored. He, he restores. He makes things new in your life. He makes you new again. And that's what he wants to do in our lives right now. He wants to bring restoration. And that is what we're going to see today. Because God restores you see, as an individual and as a church, I want you to crave for God. I want you to crave for him to restore you. And I'm praying right now that God will restore our community because there's a lot of hatred in our community. I want God to restore our nation because there's a lot of hatred in this world. I want God to restore the world because there is so much darkness that we're in right now. And it's no coincidence that the Israelites went through the same as we go through today. 
You see, this prayer from Psalm 80, I think, is so applicable to us today as well. Restore us, O God, should be our plea. Restore us. Make your face shine on us so that we will be saved. You see, the psalmist is praying, God, give, uh, praying to God to give Israel a second chance of life. A second chance. They're going through this dark period. They're going through persecution. They're going through all this. And they're saying, give us a chance of life. Things were dark. Things were hard. And things looked hopeless. Man, that is such a carbon copy of today. Because when we look at what the world is around us, I can't help but feel that things are hopeless right now. That things are just not like they used to be in the 80s. I never thought, and I told myself growing up, time and time again, I am not going to be like my dad. Because growing up in the 80s, all these things was changing, computers, all this stuff was happening. And my dad said, man, if you could just remember the 50s. The 50s were the good time. And I told myself, I am not going to do that, but here I am doing it. Man, just remember where we are to where we are now. And I can't help but think, no matter what is happening or going on in your life, no matter what you're dealing with right now from the past or the present, I think the truth is, is that God wants you to be restored into him. He wants to restore our church. He wants to restore our community. And he wants to restore our world because God restores. It's what he does. He's in the restoration business. It is the core of who he is and what he does. God restores the broken. God restores the sinful. God restores the disappointed and the discouraged. He restores the sick. He restores the disillusioned. He restores the damaged. And he restores those who are di dying. And you're thinking, man, this is not a very encouraging thing. But it is because it's something that we all are dealing with. I know there are people here today who are suffering. I know there are people here today who are dealing with things that they feel are beyond their control, but I'm here to tell you today that if God is part of your life, he is in control. He is going to take control over it. But we've got to be restored. We need to be made new again in him. And here's how he does it. Here's how he does it. He changes the darkness into light. When you walk into a room, it is dark sometimes. You don't know where things are. You don't know where to walk or how to get around. But once that light comes on, you can see everything. That is how we are to be with God when we are looking at him because we can look at this dark world and say, okay, we know what we need to do now because we can see what God is doing. We can see that God is in charge. You see, darkness tells us that things will never change. And that is what the world is telling us right now. The world is telling us there is no hope. There is no change in, in sight. But if you're sitting here today, you know down deep inside that a change can happen. And a change will happen when we start to restore our life back into God. He is restoring our work. Listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 12. He says, I have come into the world as what? Light encouragement, lifting up. I, I, you need to see me so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. You don't need to stay in your darkness anymore. You don't need to stay there. God is here this morning calling on you to restore that relationship with him, to restore that relationship with Jesus so that light, life can come into your world so that you can begin to be light in someone else's world. They begin to see that light in you because they see that you are restored. You see, folks, you cannot be in Christ and be in darkness at the same time. It just can't happen because Jesus outshines that darkness. That's a complete contradiction. Jesus can, came to bring you out of the darkness. He gave his life for you. His resurrection, his death on the cross gives us a brand new life. And that is why we are here today. 
that life, Jesus' life, restores life back into us. It gives us life to those who were dead, but now we are alive in Christ. I, I love what the book of Micah says in Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Listen to what he says. This Old Testament prophet, listen to his words. He says, though I have fallen, I could probably ask you this morning, how many of you have fallen this week? And probably all of you would raise your hand. I could ask you, how many of you fell yesterday and, and fallen and was out of graces with God? You probably could raise your hand because I know mine would go up. But how many of you have fallen? He says that though I have fallen, though I have messed up, though that I have run away from God, he says this, I will rise. I will be made new. I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, though this world is in darkness, darkness is all around me, the Lord will be my light. He will guide and direct me. He is in control. I love that because it is such an accurate description of my life. Though I have fallen, though I have messed up, though I have gone away from what you have called me to do, Lord, I know that I can rise up and that you will bring me and make me whole again. We're going to mess up. We're going to sin. Life is not going to be perfect. But because of Jesus... Our falls are not fatal. Because of Jesus, our falls are not fatal. Every time we fall, we rise up and we thank God for his incredible grace. We are going to fall into darkness, but God's light is there. His mercy, his grace is there to rescue us every single time. And after God, after he does that restoring work in our life, guess what? He doesn't even remember what it was. He doesn't even remember the way we used to be. Notice the key word, the way we used to be. He doesn't remember the sins of our past, nor will he remember the sins of our present. I like this quote I saw who said this. He doesn't remember that junk that came into his shop. How many of you were hooked when all these restoration shows came out on TV? I mean, it was amazing. You would see people bring these pieces of junk into a shop, and they'd be like, we'll give you X amount of dollars for that. And you're like, why would you pay that much for it? Because the person who they brought it to knew that they could make it better than what it was. That's what God does for us. That's what Jesus does for us. He restores us. We walk into the shop one way, we come out another way. Totally new, totally for God. That's what we are all about. All he sees is a new creation. That's all he sees. What we've become. Not where we were, but what we've become. We read this verse already, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if anyone who is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, but the new has come. Folks, we got to grab hold of that. That is encouraging to me. To know that the mistakes that I made in the past don't amount to anything to God. You see, this is a message that every single person in this room needs to he hear. You see... The real you is found in one and only person, Jesus. The real you is found in Jesus. It's not found in this world. It's not found in your money. It's not found in relationship. And it is not found in sin. It's not about self because it's about Jesus. We aren't defined by our sin. We are defined by a Savior who came to give us life and to build us up and to restore us. Self can do nothing for us in this world. Let's go back to the prayer in Psalm 80. The last part of this verse is crucial, and sometimes it could be a part that could be overlooked because the first part is so exciting. Restore us, O oh God. Make your face shine upon us. But look at what it says at the end. It says this, that we may be what? Saved. We may be saved. The psalmist was completely honest. 
He said, we need to be saved. Translation, we can't do this ourselves. We need a Savior. And I think that is awesome. But here's what's not awesome. For a lot of people, as morality increases in this world, their perceived need of a Savior decreases because they're depending on themselves. They're depending on things around them to get them through it. And so the need of a Savior decreases. And that, my friend, is a lie that comes straight from the mouth of Satan. That's what he wants you to believe, that you can do it yourself, that you can save yourself. But if you've been in the church long enough, you know that that's not true. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. No matter if you have been in the church for 50 years or if this is your first day in the church, you need a Savior. You need a Savior. And that is what we need to grab on today. You need the gospel today, whether you've been here 50 years or not, as much as the first person who's hearing it today. You need the grace of God as much as the people uh, who have been here for the first time or if you've been here for 50 years. You need his grace and his mercy. We are not defined by ourself. We are defined of who we are by the Savior in whom we worship. And no matter how long you have followed Jesus, we still need his grace and his forgiveness and his mercy just as much today as we did as the day when we went into that baptistry. We still need it today. Our hope is not found in ourselves, And the psalmist told us that. Our hope is found in the Savior. It's found in the truth of Jesus that he already did it. It's done through his resurrection and his and his his crucifixion we are a new creation it's nothing that we did it's nothing that we can sustain it is 100 percent jesus and what he did on the cross and the psalmist asaph told us that many many years ago in psalm 80 he told us the exact same thing look at verse 17 for a moment Look at verse 17, he says, Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man that you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Who is the one that sits at the right hand of the Father? Who is the one? Who is the son of man? Jesus. Jesus. In centuries before, Jesus was even born. This prophecy reminds us that we are revived, that we are renewed, that we are restored when we call on the name of Jesus. Restore us, O oh God. Make us new again. Let your face shine down upon me. Save me. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. So let me ask you a question as I wrap this up. Do you want to be restored in Jesus? Do you want to be made new again in Jesus? Restore your relationship with him. Allow him to guide your life. Rely on him and begin to see that through the restoration of God and through the restoration of Jesus, we can begin to see Jesus changing everything in our lives, in our church, in our community, in our home, and then praise God in our world. Because Jesus truly does change anything. And he tells us that even back in the Psalms, that it can only be done through him. We're going to do things a little bit different today. Don't worry. Don't get afraid. But we want to encourage you to let you know that we are here for you. So we're going to do an invitation a little bit different. If you need to make a decision for Jesus, I would love to talk to you. I would love to let you know how, how Jesus can come into your life, how he can restore uh, that relationship with God if you don't have that today. Or if you just want to partner with us as a church, you've come here and you, you, you see what's going on, you see God at work, and you're going to hear more here in a little bit at the end of the service. But if you want to talk to me about that, I'll be over here on my right. 
or I know, as I said earlier, there are people who are hurting. There are people who just maybe need prayer right now because they're in the darkness. They want God to restore them. Zach will be over to my left on this side. And if you just need prayer, he'll pray with you. If you want to go out in the hall and pray, that's fine. But whatever your decision is, we encourage you to do it today as we stand and sing our song of invitation.